And for the first time, by Beatles, Jimmy Nichol, who will be leaving us tomorrow, who's done marvellous work during the temporary brief but very grave illness of Ringo Starr. Very grave. <laughs> so grave. Jimmy Nichol not only got the opportunity to play with the Beatles during the height of their fame, but he also got the chance to hang around with music legends John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison. However, this only lasted for two weeks, and then everything went back to normal for Jimmy. Jimmy's whirlwind began when Ringo Starr collapsed with tonsillitis on the eve of the Beatles' 1964 Australian tour. The band's manager Brian Epstein as well as their producer George Martin urgently discussed the viability of using a stand-in drummer rather than cancelling the rest of the tour. George happened to suggest Jimmy Nickel, as he had recently used him on a recording session with Tommy Quickly. Jimmy appeared in his first Beatles concert just 27 hours later at the KB Hallen in Copenhagen, Denmark. Before hitting the stage, he was styled with the distinctive Beatle mop-top hairstyle and even wore Ringo's suit, despite the trousers being too short. Paul McCartney recalled teasingly sending Ringo a telegram saying, hurry up and get well Ringo, Jimmy is wearing out all your suits. Commenting later on the fickle nature of his brief celebrity, Jimmy remembered, The day before I was a Beatle, girls weren't interested in me at all. The day after, with the suit and the Beatle cut, riding in the back of the limo with John and Paul, they were dying to get a touch of me. It was very strange and quite scary. Whilst visiting the Netherlands, Jimmy and John Lennon allegedly spent a whole night at a brothel. At this point, the Beatles were becoming more restricted by their fame, and had to spend most of their free time inside their hotels. However, Jimmy could behave much as any tourist could, he said, I often went out alone, hardly anybody recognized me and I was able to wander around. In Hong Kong, I went to see the thousands of people who live on little boats in the harbor. I saw the refugees in Kowloon and I visited a nightclub. I like to see life, a beetle could never really do that. In total, Jimmy played eight shows, until Ringo rejoined the group in Melbourne, Australia. Jimmy didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to the Beatles, as they were still asleep when he left. Instead, Jimmy silently walked away, and everything returned to normal, as if he had never been a part of them, and the 13 days were a dream. What do you feel you're taking back with you apart from experience? Um, oh dear, that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Money in the bank. <laughs> yeah. George Martin went on to pay tribute to Jimmy. He said, Jimmy Nickel was a very good drummer who came along and learnt Ringo's parts very well. He did the job excellently and faded into obscurity immediately afterwards. Paul McCartney added, It wasn't an easy thing for Jimmy to stand in for Ringo and have all that fame thrust upon him, and the minute his tenure was over he wasn't famous anymore. Several years later Jimmy went on to shed light on any disenchantment he felt when it came to readjusting to normality, he said, Standing in for Ringo was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Until then I was quite happy earning 30 or 40 pounds a week. After the headlines died, I began dying too. However, he decided not to cash in on his time in the band. In a rare 1987 interview, he added, After the money ran low, I thought of cashing in in some way or other. But the timing wasn't right, and I didn't want to step on the Beatles' toes. They had been damn good for me and to me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ringo, folks. Uh, well, what can I say? And goodbye you to know. all of them. <laughs> well, this is Ringo. Everyone seems to have said everything here, so I'll just sign off by saying cheerio and best of luck from the Beatles. <laughs>